impressive work of Rosen's from Johns Hopkins University, which said that people with a certain form of ApoE protein, that's apolipoprotein E, there are three forms, two, three, and four. And every human being inherits one copy from the mother and one from the father. And uh, if you have two copies of E2, you will almost never get Alzheimer's disease, no matter how long you live. If you have two copies of E4, you're very likely to get it before you're 60, 65 years old. So it's a major risk factor. If you get to E3, which is the wild type, the most common, you're intermediate in between those two things. And so when I looked at it, I, I, I reviewed the, the biochemistry of the ApoE protein. The second highest concentration is in your cerebral spinal fluid. The highest concentration is in your liver. And the reason for that is that the ApoE protein is excreted from brain cells into the cerebral spinal fluid, cleared into the blood, and cleared by the liver into the biliary transport system and excreted. It's a housekeeping protein. As it leaves, it carries cholesterol with it, oxidized cholesterol and oxidized lipids. When I looked at the uh, structure of the two, three, and four, they're identical except in two amino acid regions. The E2, which is very protective, has two cysteine groups, which means it has two binding sites that it can bind mercury and carry mercury out of the cerebral spinal fluid as it goes into the plasma to be excreted. The E3, which is moderately protective, has one cysteine that's left, and the other one is an arginine. So it can carry out one molecule of mercury for every atom of the uh, enzyme. The E4, which is the high risk, has lost both cysteines and cannot excrete or help excrete or prevent mercury from getting into the brain that goes through the cerebral spinal fluid. And we, we proposed that theory a long, long time ago, about 1994 or something like that in a conference in Germany, and we wrote it up in several articles saying this, this makes sense. It's the amount of mercury carrying capacity going out of the cerebral spinal fluid into the blood to be excreted from the body that protects the brain from mercury exposure and prevents Alzheimer's disease. No one has ever come up with a good explanation of why the ApoE4 increases your risk for mercury and the ApoE2 increases your protection, but they won't consider that hypothesis and yet chemically it makes all the sense in the world. They won't, I mean, you'll never see it discussed because again, there's just absolutely no money in uh, you know, removing mercury from our environment as far as the pharmaceutical companies are concerned. Plus, if you do say this and you do find out that this is the major cause, uh, you lose all of the, uh, the vast uh, uh, amounts of cash that are out there waiting for a reasonable treatment, even if they don't work, for Alzheimer's disease. And today, you know, we have several, quote, treatments for Alzheimer's disease that don't work that people pay for, insurance companies pay for. They may slow the progression of the disease uh, you know, a little bit, but that's the best they do. And I think this is something that uh, I find inexplicable. I mean, at least if you don't agree with me, invite me to a meeting and try and beat me up. Let's, let's see who, if you bring it out to the entire audience, who would win that debate. And uh, I don't, I mean, I've never been invited to speak at an Alzheimer's conference on this theory. Or the theory of mercury toxicity, and that one's even more dramatically supportive. I mean, mercury and only mercury can make the abnormal biochemistry that's readily seen in an AD versus an, a normal brain. You add mercury to a normal brain or you expose rats to mercury vapor and you make a brain with the same biochemistry as you, that's abnormal that you see in an Alzheimer's disease patient. And you can't get funding for it and you can't get included in any of the Alzheimer's uh, conferences because again, there's just no money to be made by getting rid of mercury.